what is up guys i hope you are good and your bike is also doing good amidst the new norms or uh, policy that has come from the government about the e20 fuel so in this particular video i'll talk about everything that you need to know about the e20 fueling so whether you have a bs3 bike or a bs4 bike or a bs6 phase 2 bike that is e20 compatible no matter what bike you have you must watch this video till the end because i'm going to clear out some myths and some rumors so yeah let's get started okay so first of all let us understand what is ethanol blending and why on the first hand we're doing this i hope you already knew it because this video is coming about a week later so you already knew what ethanol is ethanol is an alcohol so first in brazil they introduced and now we are also replicating brazil's uh, ethanol adaptation so yeah ethanol uh, have very few uh, carbon footprints so that it is very useful for the environment and looking at the global warming we are moving forward to more and more ethanol blending that is how the e10 e20 and the future e27 is targeting so what is wrong with ethanol is that it is a hygroscopic solvent so it absorbs water from the atmosphere so we have some breather hoses in our fuel tank atmosphere getting absorbed through that hoses and it dissolves with the petrol and the water it absorbs it corrodes the metal so suppose you have a e20 compliant engine and you are using e20 so you think you are safe right but it is not the moment you use E20 fuel in your motorcycle or car, that E20 ethanol will start to corrode the metal fuel tank or else it will uh, produce some gunks and uh, like gum like substances that is very sticky and it will clog the fuel injector or the intake valve, things like that. So no matter is your bike or car is compatible or not the ethanol is going to affect in long term so even if you have e20 compatible car or bike you should have given an option to fill the e5 or e10 or even the purest form of gasoline or petrol whatever see people are claiming that ethanol is damaging the o-rings of the fuel injector fuel pump etc so i went ahead to 99rpm.com where you can see each and every component of the Bajaj bikes so I take out the part list and what I figured out is 2019 models and 2024 models of the Bajaj motorcycles has the same fuel pump gasket see the government has already talked about their uh, ambitious projects and roadmaps well ahead of time to all companies so they're well informed that hey we are going to introduce E20 or E27 or even E85. So prepare for that. If they are not prepared, they will not last in the market. So they are well informed and what they are doing is they are not informing us about each and every step. That is how it is. The gaskets, the fuel tanks, everything for E10, E20 are the same. Nothing to worry about. If you have E10 compatible motorcycle, e20 fuel is not going to harm or buying selling the e10 vehicle or selling the e10 vehicle and buying a e20 vehicle will not help you substantially because the e20 fuel itself is a menace it is going to clog your injector for long run put a lot of deposits in the intake valve your throttle body is going to look dirty the gum like substance the gunks is going to be everywhere as long as we are going to fill e20 from now on we have to maintain our machines a little bit more so if you have a basic phase one or phase two vehicle it is either e10 or e20 compatible so either way you are safe with ethanol blends but what about the bs3 vehicles which are originally designed to take no ethanol at all what happened to them if you use uh, e20 on a regular basis see if you have a carburetor in your bike it is going to clog real fast because carburetor materials or the float is not ready to take ethanol blends the ethanol will corrode them real fast 
don't let the vehicle settle for a longer period of time ride it on regular basis and feel xp 100 once in a blue moon that will help uh, cleaning the entire system also uh, you must use the petrol additives on a regular basis that will also help cleaning everything up and make sure your tank lid is closed properly the gasket and the seal is intact that is why no external atmosphere is getting absorbed by the fuel tank now coming to the fact that e20 blended petrols are uh, going to cause you a lesser mileage yes this is true because the calorific value of ethanol is much lower than petrol obviously if you look at the formula the petrol is octane c8h18 and the ethanol is c2h5oh so clearly less amount of carbon and less amount of energy as well per unit molecule so yeah when blended 20 percent of ethanol to the petrol it is going to reduce the carbon emission as well as the calorific value so yeah you're going to feel a little less power less acceleration and obviously lower mileage because the volumetric efficiency is coming down now uh, another myth is that some i've seen some videos where people are extracting out ethanol from the petrol and filling that petrol back in claiming that they are using the petrol in the purest form this is a myth see there are processes to extract out ethanol from petrol i hope you already knew it because some uh, people are doing it in youtube and the videos are going very viral now so you have to mix water with it so being hygroscopic in nature ethanol will leave petrol and will bond with water now you can separate the petrol using decantation the problem with this is the octane number for bs6 phase 2 bikes we need a petrol octane number of 91 so we can go as high as 100 as pure petrol so to increase the octane number of petrol from originally it was 87 the bs6 phase 2 requires 91 so to increase that octane number there are types of chemicals that has been added also named as aromatics so aromatics such as tel which is tetroid high lead and benzene things like that so these chemicals are added to make pure form of petrol from 87 octane to 91 octane now the ethanol on the other hand has a much higher octane so whenever something has a higher octane it means that can compress a little more and that will not ignite itself now the ethanol itself has an octane number of if i'm not wrong it's 108 or 110 something so when a, you are mixing ethanol with petrol you are anyway increasing the octane number you know the basic maths the average out so when you extract out the ethanol out of that blending you're left with pure petrol with the octane number much lower than 91 and in that case you're increasing the chance of self-igniting and that is how the term knocking comes in so whenever the piston compresses the mixture and then spark ignites and then the everything inside that compressed uh, volume produces a power stroke but the pre-ignition or knocking is the before compression or before the spark kicks in the volume ignites itself that is knocking so yeah don't do it don't uh, try to extract out ethanol it is how it is you have to live with it unless you are adding any octane boosters which is very costly so that is not making any sense now one thing you can do or at least some superbike owners can do is that you can feel the xp 100 i've seen a video on youtube where uh, the guy have proven that the xp 100 doesn't have any blending at all that is a good thing for rich people obviously 160 a liter we cannot afford that for a 10 percent increase of volumetric efficiency 50 percent increase in price doesn't make any sense at all now if you have the money you can go and buy the xp100 but there is a limitation as well the xp100 is not available anywhere outside the metro city even in the metro city there are very few pumps where the xp100 petrol is available so your vehicle 
uh, is now going to act like a EV. So you have very few charging stations and you have very few XP100 fuel pumps. So yeah, you, you get my point. So that is not a practical thing to have. But anyway, you are if you are using your bike or your car for the Sunday rides, you can use that. You can use XP100. Okay, here's the thing. Now how to protect your motorcycle or your cars from E20 blending. Some chemicals available online. Those are called petrol additives. Those are basically some cleaning agents. What they do is they clean throughout the system. So they clean the injector, they clean the throttle bodies, they clean the butterfly valve, any sensor that has some accumulation, fuel pump and intake valves. And also after using them, you'll feel like the motorcycle or the car is responding a little crisper the power delivery is a little refined and smoother now so this is a win-win for both improving the performance and also reducing the maintenance cycle so i highly suggest you to use this as of now until we have a revised policy what i use is the yamaha lube uh, pea carbon cleaner so pe is a nitrogen based uh, cleaning agent which is very durable and it tolerance in heat is very high so it does not evaporate very easily and it sticks to the surface of the metal and keeps on cleaning the surface so p is the best agent you to have buying link in the description you can go and check that out use it on a regular basis and i think it will do a justice for the time being until we have a revised policy i don't think we're going to have a re revised policy very soon but if we have then it's obviously nothing like it. I'm definitely missing the E10 blended petrol. The Speed 97, XP95, nothing is coming without the blending. Uh, all of them, I guess, is roughly 15% of ethanol. So you're not going to utilize your motorcycle as much as you used to utilize it because there will be significant power drop unless the automobile industry comes up with any solution like maruti has launched e20 compatible kit for the vehicles that are not e20 compatible they're basically they're giving out some gaskets and o-rings so i'm expecting every company to come up with a similar solution because it will not cost much now next question is uh, should you buy any new vehicles now see if you're going to buy any new vehicles now it is going to be e20 compliant and e27 government has already said that there is no sure plan about the e27 because there are a lot of uh, constant out there whenever you are going from e20 to e27 so it is not gonna push like it used to push from e10 to e20 e20 to e27 is not going to be that much easier if you own e20 vehicles you don't need to worry at all even the e27 comes in e20 vehicles can take e27 very easily because three to five percent or five to seven percent is not a big deal because the material is built to take the ethanol no matter it is 10 percent or 20 percent if it is built for 10 percent it can take 20 percent as well the difference is in the ECU tuning because the engine need to push a little more fuel to increase the volumetric efficiency because E10's volumetric efficiency is much higher than E20's volumetric efficiency. E20's volumetric efficiency is much higher than E27's volumetric efficiency. So the difference is in ECU tuning. So my request to all of the manufacturers out there is to take the bold step and release firmware updates for the existing customers because we have trust on you and we know that with the ECU update these fueling adjustment can be done and the E10 vehicles can easily adapt E20 petrol. So yeah that is all from my end guys. Uh, I hope uh, my informations or my research has uh, helped you reducing your trauma or predicaments that you are in so i highly suggest you to use petrol additives use it as a cleaning agent and help your motorcycle or your car to stay in the best shape possible and stay subscribed to the channel for further updates
if you have any other question apart from this feel free to use the comment box down below and i'll catch you in the next one till then take care and happy riding